Can we talk for a moment afterward? Huh? Oh, yes. I'm sorry for keeping you. Please, have a seat here. At the stepchild school event, the homeroom teacher called me over. Please divorce your husband. Huh? Oh. I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. Well, it's not that it's wrong, but... That's not exactly what I wanted to say. Um. Teacher, please calm down. I'll listen to what you have to say properly. I was taken aback by the unexpected words, but it seemed that the teacher was quite flustered and had just made a mistake in how to convey the message. I calmed the teacher down and listened to what they really wanted to say. Please listen calmly. Actually, your son. The teacher's words were shocking. I see, so that's why the request to divorce my husband. This was definitely information that required an immediate divorce. After hearing what the teacher said, I decided to proceed with the divorce. I am Iman. I am 38 years old and work as a nurse. I married Ezra, who is 6 years older and works in a company, 10 years ago. Now, we live together with our 12-year-old son, Sean. The fact that we are in our 10th year of marriage and our son is 12 years old is not because I gave birth before marriage. This is my first marriage, but my husband is a divorcee and our son is his child from a previous marriage. It seems that the chance of a father gaining custody of a young child is about 10%. Nevertheless, my husband was able to gain custody of his son because the reasons for the divorce were his ex-wife's infidelity, mismanagement of money, and her lack of economic power as a stay-at-home mom. Indeed, I agree that it would be impossible to leave a child with such a mother. Since I have been living with him since he was two years old, he sees me as his real mother, and I, of course, treat him as my real son. I'm home. I'm off. Hold on. I always say homework comes first. And you need to put away your bag yourself. When I hear my son's voice from the entrance, I shout from the kitchen towards the entrance. I stop preparing dinner and head to the entrance, but my son is already gone. Instead, a backpack left behind like a stand-in lies there. My son prefers playing outside to playing games, so he throws his backpack at the entrance when he comes home from school and immediately goes out to play. I always scold him for not doing his homework and not putting away his backpack. However, even though I am angry with my words, the role of being a mother feels real, so I am a bit pleased inside. Even while feeling exasperated, I pick up the backpack with a smile and take it to the children's room. Well, I'll leave the morning duties to you. Ah, leave it to me. Have a good day. One evening, after finishing preparing dinner, I started getting ready for work. As a nurse, I have night shifts and work on weekends. I cannot return home before the next day's work and my son's school time during night shifts. Also, since I have day shifts on weekends, I am often not home on Saturdays and Sundays. However, when I am not around, my husband takes care of things at home. Life is smooth because my husband is cooperative with housework and childcare and we have been living happily without particular troubles. But, on the tenth year of our marriage, that happy life began to come to an end. When the three of us eat dinner together, my son always tells us about the day's events. Hey, listen. Today, I saw a bird catching an insect. It swooped down from the sky and snapped it up, then flew back up immediately. Oh. That's a rare sight. It must have been quite a sight. Although my son talks very happily, 
since it's just a normal day for a grade schooler. The content of his story isn't particularly interesting to us adults. However, my husband and I listen to his story with smiles and nods as he desperately tries to convey what he saw and felt. I look forward to having dinner together with my family more than anything, as it lets me experience happy family time. Such an enjoyable dinner suddenly turned dark. Didn't you play with your friends today? Did anything fun happen? Not really. Oh, it's unusual since it's Sunday and you usually have more time to play. So, where did you play today? The usual park. During dinner, my son, who usually chatters away, suddenly became aloof and spoke only the bare minimum. The dinner time without my son's voice felt lonely, and the clattering of dishes echoed emptily. Moreover, my son became aloof not only during dinner but throughout the house. Thank you for the meal. Sean, how about playing a game with dad afterwards? No. Until now, my son would watch TV, play games, or lounge on the sofa after dinner. But now, he immediately retreats to his room as soon as he finishes eating. My husband and I were worried about the clearly changed behavior of our son. I wonder if something happened at school with Sean? I don't know. He doesn't seem to dislike going to school, and he always goes out to play immediately after coming home from school. Then it doesn't seem to be about school or friends. Maybe it's something to do with studying. I can't say for sure at this point. No matter how much my husband and I discussed, we couldn't find an answer. But asking our son didn't resolve the issue either. You've been quiet at home lately. Did something happen? Not really. I see, then that's fine. My son didn't tell me anything. By the time he is in the sixth grade, it is natural for him to have things he doesn't want to share with his parents. However, he had always talked about everything with excitement before. Therefore, being dismissed with just a not really from my son felt like a pain, like a nail hammered into my chest. I wanted to press him for a reason, but I thought that being too persistent might have the opposite effect. So, I decided to watch over him for a while. Ten days after my son's behavior changed. Hey, listen. Today, the teacher forgot her textbook in the staff room during class. I wonder how she planned to conduct the class. The homeroom teacher is quite young, right? It must be tough for her. You shouldn't laugh at someone's mistakes. My son, holding a bowl and chopsticks, continued talking without putting food in his mouth. His mood gradually improved after about a week. It seemed that the change in his behavior was temporary, and relived, I listened to his stories with a more cheerful expression. Although I didn't know the reason, I felt relived thinking that the problem was resolved. However, it seemed the improvement in my son's mood was temporary. Since it's Sunday, you must have played a lot today. Did anything fun happen? Not really. So, what did you do today? Played soccer. After a few days, my son became aloof again. The words from my son, which felt like being pushed away, caused my chest to hurt again like being hammered with a nail. Just like before, I lightly asked for a reason. You've become quiet again. Did something happen? Nothing. My son slammed the door at the entrance with more force than usual and went to school. My husband, who happened to be leaving for work, seemed to have watched our interaction from behind. It'll probably go back to normal after a while. Do you think so? This time he responded more strongly than before. Is it going to be okay? 
The 12 year olds now are different from when we were 12. Sean is much more mature than we think. So, treating him too much like a child might backfire. Let's keep watching over him like before. My husband put on his shoes and went to work without hurrying. Although my husband said it's okay to just watch over our son, I felt that something needed to be done. I didn't have a particular reason. If I had to mention one, it would be a mother's intuition. However, while I thought that something needed to be done, I also agreed with my husband's point that treating our son too much like a child wasn't good. I was troubled about what to do and felt my body lighten a bit when I decided on the next step as I tilted my head and returned to the living room. When I returned to the living room, a notice about a class observation left on the table since last night caught my eye. That's right. I should talk to the homeroom teacher during the class observation. Since I only knew about my son at home, if I could find out about him outside of home, it might give me some hints for solving the problem. Feeling a bit lighter now that I decided what to do next from a state of not knowing what to do, I felt a bit relieved. On the day of the class observation, my husband couldn't take a day off from work, so I went to the class observation alone. When I arrived at the school, I headed to my son's classroom with familiar steps, as I had attended every class observation before. Children's reactions during class observations vary. Some children turn around in their seats, smile, and wave at their parents, while others continue to face forward shyly. My son glanced at me from time to time. All right, we'll start the class now, although the back of the classroom is also interesting. As soon as the homeroom teacher entered the classroom, the children who had been turning around all faced forward. This was the first time I saw the homeroom teacher's face as there are no home visits from the school, and this is the first class observation for my son in the sixth grade. The homeroom teacher, standing in front of the blackboard with something like an attendance book on the desk, looked dignified but, as my son had said, was quite young. She appeared to be in her mid to late twenties. It seems that the popularity of young teachers remains unchanged, as even now, my son's homeroom teacher is beloved by the children and is addressed not by her surname but as Miss Natasha. Today, while part of my purpose was to observe my son's class, I also aimed to speak with Miss Natasha. After the class observation, I attended the parent-teacher conference. Since the homeroom teacher would also be present, I planned to approach her personally after it concluded. Well then, I'd like to bring this parent-teacher conference to a close. When the conference ended, I wanted to speak with the homeroom teacher before she left or other parents approached her. I was slightly conscious of the surroundings and, pretending not to be in a hurry, approached her quickly. However, before I could speak to her, the homeroom teacher called out to me. Do you have a moment after this? Eh? Oh, yes. I stopped my approach, waiting for the other parents to leave the classroom where the conference was held. Once the other parents had left, the classroom became so quiet that I could clearly hear noises from outside the window and the hallway. I'm sorry for making you stay. Please, have a seat. I sat in the chair, and the homeroom teacher took a seat across from me. While she appeared dignified during the class and the conference, up close, she still seemed quite young. As I looked at her, she wore a worried expression, like a student anxious about their exam results. She also seemed a bit fidgety, as if she were holding in the need to use the restroom. It was clear that the homeroom teacher was trying to say something difficult about my son. To brace myself for whatever words might come, I tensed up, preparing for the worst. Please divorce your husband. Eh? I had braced myself for something related to my son, but instead, 
The teacher spoke about my husband and even suggested a divorce. I was taken aback by this unexpected revelation. Oh. I'm so sorry. That's not what I meant. Well, it's not that it isn't what I meant, but what I want to say is something else, um. It seemed the teacher, too nervous, had skipped over the explanation. Her face turned red, sweat beaded, and she displayed an anxiousness I'd only seen in cartoons, her hand on her chest, scratching her head. Even though she was a teacher, she was still quite young. Please calm down, teacher. I will listen carefully. The teacher took a deep breath and tried to compose herself. It seemed that what she had to say was very difficult for her. Please listen calmly. Actually, your son. Sean. The teacher needed to calm down. Her words were so shocking that I had no space in my mind to even think of responding. I began to understand why the suggestion of divorce was linked to this. Indeed, it must have taken considerable courage for her to speak up as a teacher. Her anxiety and agitation were understandable. I thanked the teacher for her courage and resolved to divorce my husband. Before confronting my husband with the divorce, I needed evidence. Since the teacher had heard from my son, I planned to gather more detailed information from him, which might provide the clues I needed. However, Given the sensitive nature of the information, it would be too emotionally taxing for my son to discuss deeply. It had already been proven that this would be too much of a burden. It can't be helped. It's honestly unpleasant, but I'll have to catch him red-handed. I decided to suppress my anger until it was time to execute my plan and continued with my daily routine as usual. What did you learn at school today? Nothing much. It can't be nothing much. Stop dragging this out and eat quickly. The dishes won't clean themselves. Sean, you went out to play again without doing your homework, didn't you? Eat quickly and do your homework. Okay. After finishing his meal quietly like a monk, Sean went straight to his room. For the past few days, I had been assisting him to stay in his room as much as possible. Although we hadn't discussed anything, it seemed Sean sensed my assistance. Consequently, only my husband remained oblivious. As you said, Sean's mood hasn't improved much. It used to be about a week, but now it's been nearly two weeks. Yes. But it wasn't your idea? Sean is more mature than we think, so let's not treat him like a child. I agree, and let's observe a little longer. Hmm, is that really okay? My husband looked troubled, questioning whether our approach to Sean was truly correct. However, I wanted him to continue observing Sean as he was. In fact, I preferred him not to change his approach. As I washed the dishes, I silently wished for nothing to change, sending my unnoticeable intentions towards my husband. Whether my intentions reached him or not, the days passed without any change in my husband's behavior. Well then, I'm heading to work. Ha! Huh. Isn't today a day off after the night shift? There was someone at work who wanted to see the children's club match, so I swapped shifts. Since it's a daytime shift, I should be back around 7 p.m. as usual. Oh, and since it's Sunday, please take care of Sean's lunch. He'll probably eat and then go play, so feed him early. Got it. Eager to leave the house, I quickly put on my shoes and left. Although I told my husband I was going to work, it was a lie. I stopped after turning the first corner, hid, and kept watch on the house. I had packed bread and water in my bag to endure a long wait. Observing the house, 
I felt like a detective on a stakeout. About four hours into the stakeout, Sean came out of the house and ran energetically in the opposite direction from where I was. Now the real stakeout began. Although I didn't need to watch until Sean left, I had to keep an eye out for any irregularities like Sean leaving early or my husband going out, so I stayed vigilant. Having spent four hours already, I thought it might be tough, but my obsession made the wait bearable. One hour after Sean left, the situation finally began to shift. A young, attractive woman appeared from the direction Sean had gone. She looked younger than me, perhaps just over 30. When she arrived in front of our house, she entered without ringing the doorbell. How lucky to hit the jackpot on the first day. I had been waiting for this woman to come to our house. I had an idea of when she would arrive, but it wasn't guaranteed. Thus, I had prepared to stake out for as many days as needed until she arrived. Fortunately, it seemed I had drawn the lucky card on the first day. Confirming the woman had entered, I approached the house quickly, even though I didn't need to crouch down. The bedroom window visible from the right upper corner of the front door was the couple's bedroom. Once I heard a sound from inside, it would be my signal to enter. I closed my eyes as if meditating, focusing on the bedroom window to catch any faint sounds. After about 10 minutes, I heard a small door slam from the bedroom. It was strange how I felt I could hear voices clearly despite the distance, now that I was certain someone was inside. Eh? Already? If you don't hurry, the child might come back. Hearing what seemed like this conversation, I decided to enter the house. I quietly opened the front door, trying to make as little noise as possible, and slowly set down my bag, quietly removing my shoes. Once inside, I headed straight for the second floor. The stairs creaked slightly underfoot. Though not loud enough for my husband to hear, the small sounds were disturbing to me. Once on the second floor, I knew that even slight sounds might be noticed, so I carefully advanced on tiptoe to the bedroom door. Upon reaching the door, I listened again. Inside, I heard voices that I didn't want to hear. Disgusting. I wanted to avoid this method, but, well, it can't be helped. I placed my hand on the bedroom door, deliberately clearing my mind to let emotions take over. Hey. What are you doing? I flung open the bedroom door with such force that it almost broke. My husband, startled, jumped out of bed, and the woman quickly covered herself with the blanket. Why are you here? Looking at the bed where my husband and the woman were, I saw their clothes scattered on the floor. I stomped loudly towards their clothes, deliberately making noise to vent my frustration. What are you planning to do? Without saying a word, I gathered the clothes, opened the window, and threw them outside. With this, the two couldn't escape and would have to listen to me. Both of you, sit on the bed. Unable to escape, the two complied with my instructions, sitting on the bed in their nakedness, which was quite humiliating. Why are you here? Wasn't it supposed to be work? It's a lie. I thought if no one was home, a woman would come to the house. How did you know that? It's because Sean saw what you were doing. Ha! Huh. What do you mean? The son's behavior changed because he witnessed his father's affair. The father had invited his mistress to the house on a Sunday when I was away for work all day, and the son was out playing until evening. However, because his friend couldn't come over due to family reasons, the son came home early one evening. At that time, he encountered the affair, didn't know what to do, and left the house again without letting his father notice. 
Although he is 12 years old, he should understand that an affair is wrong. More than that, witnessing such a scene between parents would be traumatic. As a result, while he behaved normally at school or with friends, he became unsure of how to act at home and started isolating himself in his room when his father was present. It's more accurate to say he couldn't say anything rather than he didn't tell me. Since even I felt sickened by it, the shock for him must have been significant. Don't lie. He's had times when he seemed fine, right? If he knew about us, he wouldn't be fine. It seems he trusted you and checked on the following Sunday. The son apparently didn't want to believe his father was having an affair. Therefore, the following Sunday, he pretended to go out to play and came home early. Since the affair didn't occur that day, he decided it was just a misunderstanding or a one-time thing and tried to forget about it. However, to be sure, he checked the following Sunday as well, and the affair did take place. The son, having witnessed his father's affair again, changed his attitude at home once more. How do you know so much? Sean didn't say anything, did he? Yes, he didn't say anything to me. I couldn't ask Sean for details about such things. Then how do you know so much? It's strange. Sean couldn't tell me, but he talked to his homeroom teacher. Ha! Huh. The son, having witnessed his father's affair twice and not knowing what to do, consulted his homeroom teacher. The teacher was young and popular, well-liked by the children. The teacher was someone the son could talk to easily and relate on. When the son consulted the teacher, the teacher conveyed what the son had said to me during a parent-teacher conference. As a teacher, I can't delve too deeply into personal matters. Therefore, I will only convey what Sean has shared and the issues he is facing. The teacher prefaced the conversation by indicating that as a teacher, they couldn't go into too much detail or identify the third party involved in the affair. However, the teacher spoke in a way that hinted at the gray areas. Please listen calmly. Actually, your son, Sean, said that his father was bringing an unknown woman into the house. Bringing unknown people into the house is a problem, isn't it? Yes. It seems he often calls women over on Sundays, and Sean was scared of the presence of unfamiliar adults and didn't let them into the house. That must have been frightening for him. The teacher avoided direct expressions like your husband is having an affair or please divorce for Sean's sake and instead indirectly conveyed that the affair was happening and that Sean had witnessed it. At first, in my panic, I asked for a divorce. But after regaining my composure, the teacher handled the situation appropriately. Reflecting later, it's possible that the initial request for a divorce was part of the teacher's strategy to make the indirect expressions more understandable. Having received sufficient information from the teacher, I no longer needed to ask the son about his father's affair and was able to come up with a plan to stake out the house on Sundays. Since the affair was witnessed, we don't need any more evidence, right? Will you sign the divorce papers right now? Ha! Huh. Divorce? Of course. There's no way I can continue with someone who brings women into the house. Um. You be quiet. Ignoring the mistress, dealing with the husband was the priority. I thrust the prepared divorce papers at him and had him fill out the necessary parts while still in his underwear. I asked him something that had been on my mind. You were divorced from your previous wife because she had an affair, right? You should know how horrible an affair is. So why did you have an affair? Well, there were times when you and Sean weren't home, and I met someone I felt good about. So, even though he had suffered from being cheated on, he couldn't resist his desires.
I don't think all men are unfaithful, but is this how men are? At the very least, it seems the husband was a terrible man. Glancing at the mistress, she was glaring at the husband with a frightening expression, like a fierce deity. It was clear she had things she wanted to say, but she was holding back, fearing that speaking up would make me yell at her again. Her hands, placed on her knees in a sitting posture, were clenched into fists and trembling. Have you written it? Then I'll hold on to this. We can discuss the details another time. Details? You can't just submit this piece of paper and say, okay, divorce. There are discussions needed for things like alimony, property division, and custody, right? I had my husband fill out the divorce papers, but I couldn't submit them immediately. Even so, having him fill out the papers was to keep evidence that he also intended to divorce, just in case. That's right. Discussions are necessary. Ha! Huh. Custody? What's that about? There's no way I can leave Sean with you. Sean is my child too, you know. He's also my child right now. I plan to leave things to the lawyer from here on, so please be prepared for that. I'm leaving the house now and won't be back until evening, so can you and Sean move out before I return? Why should we move out? We should discuss that too, shouldn't we? What about Sean? I can't keep him with you. Or should I tell him to stay outside somewhere? Well, I see. All right, I'll move out. I decided to leave the two of them behind for now. As I was putting on my shoes at the entrance, I heard shouting from the second floor. What's going on? Why do I have to go through this? I don't know what she discussed with my husband, but I think she's equally at fault for the affair. I'll make sure to claim alimony from both my husband and his mistress, so be prepared. With a smirk on my face, I put on my shoes slowly and left the house. Having caught my husband in the act of the affair, I was able to finalize the divorce on terms that were almost exactly what I wanted. I made sure that both my husband and his mistress paid alimony, and I was awarded custody. Although I thought custody might be difficult, the reason for the divorce being the affair and the respect for my son's wishes allowed me to gain custody of him. The lawyer prepared the necessary documents for the divorce, and I could have asked the lawyer to submit them, but I wanted to submit them myself as a form of closure. After receiving the documents from the lawyer, I submitted them immediately. I felt a sense of satisfaction as if I had delivered the final blow to my husband, which made me feel a little better. After the divorce, it seems my husband broke up with his mistress. There's no way I could stay with someone who caused such stains in my life, like the naked sitting in alimony from the affair. The angry outburst from the mistress on the day I confronted my husband was probably filled with all the answers that followed. My ex-husband ended up alone, having lost both me and his beloved son. This experience must have made him realize that having an affair is bad, whether one is the perpetrator or the victim. My son and I moved out and are now living in an apartment. My work schedule is irregular which caused some anxiety about living with my son, but he is about to start middle school and understands that we need to live together from now on. As a result, he has started helping with simple cooking, cleaning, and laundry. He is much more mature than I thought, and now seems like a little husband. There was a period when I worried about his mental state due to the shock of witnessing his father's affair. However, after the divorce and separation from his father, he quickly returned to his usual bright self. He also seemed to understand that I was trying to keep his father and him apart as much as possible in the house. Knowing that I was on his side helped him maintain his mental well-being. The homeroom teacher suggested that he talk to the school counselor, 
but he said he didn't need it. I also think he doesn't need it now, judging by how he is. I'll continue to support him as a mother to ensure his smile never fades. How did you like this story? Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.